have another cloudy day ahead of us again today and the batteries are at 60 percent i was going to just turn the electric on just to go ahead and kick them back up so we could use a little more electricity in there for the electric heat um i don't like to leave the diesel heater running while we're not on the bus and i'm gonna be down on the pad and stuff like that so i wanted to just keep the other heat going in there uh, temperatures hanging out around 35 today so it's pretty chilly out but uh, when i went to kick it on the charger wasn't working um so I'm going to look in to find out why, it's, why the charger is not. Now I have two inverters and on the other inverter, the charger, I can get it to work. That's not one that I've ever used very much. So I just got to research the problem, see what's going on. So this MultiPlus here is reading both input line voltage and then voltage out. So I'm getting 121 volts in and then it's sending more out. I have it limited to a 10 amp or 11 amp uh, input right there. But uh, the other one's not reading any input voltage and it's sharing half of a 220 line. So I gotta figure out, is there something wrong with the electric side of it or it's just the charge controller bad? Uh, it might not be charging uh, the charger side of it. This is the other MultiPlus here and it's showing zero voltage on the input side. So one of my inverters is showing that it's getting power and the other one's not. The one that's not getting power is also not charging, which if it wasn't getting power, obviously the charger wouldn't work, but maybe the charger went bad. I'm not sure, but I just checked the, I pulled this apart and checked the 220 outlet here and it does have uh, 120 on each leg. Uh, so I haven't dropped a leg here. So from here, I know we're good. So the bus at the end of this wire is getting 220. It has two legs of one, well, two legs of 120. Um, um, so I'm going to go research it from there, but, you know, eliminate the easiest things first before I start taking stuff apart. Uh, do I have the power? So yes, the power is being supplied to the bus, but it goes from here to a transfer switch and then from there to the inverters. So I'll have to check and see what's going on. It's, it's very unusual that it would just drop a leg, I guess, but uh, trying to figure it out. Okay, I got the cover off of it. I'm going to check those AC input lines. Um, I can figure out which one's the input and which one's the output. Um, and then uh, make sure that those have voltage. And if they do, then there's nothing else I can test on this. I actually had to remove some batteries to be able to get in here. I added four Battleborn batteries since I installed that. It's a little hard to get to the, I can get to the switches on it and everything, but I can't get to the screws on the far back side without removing battery. Uh, so I had to move two of them around in order to do that. So anyways, I'm gonna get a voltmeter on there. We're gonna see that, make sure we have AC input voltage on there. And as long as we do, then uh, there's nothing else I can check. Okay, so the ones on the top, which if you're looking at it, would be on the right, uh, those are the line out. And I put my voltmeter on those two and the inverter is making electricity and I had 110, well, 120, 121 on those. Uh, and then the ones on the left are the AC in. And I put the voltmeter on those and I wasn't picking up any voltage whatsoever. So for some reason, I don't have power getting to that um, particular inverter, but power is going to the other inverter and they're just split off of a 220 line. So one, one, you know, one half goes to one, one half goes to the other. So uh, there's only two possible things that where, where the problem could be. One would be in the um, actual uh, transfer switch, uh, possibly a leg of that for some reason isn't coming through because uh, basically I just lost one leg. Um, Unfortunately, when I mounted my air conditioning unit, I mounted it in front of the transfer pump. So I got to take some bolts off for the mounting of that and actually remove that out of the way. I don't have to disconnect any lines. It'll move and there's room, room to get to it. Um, but I should have mounted that transfer. I should have remounted it somewhere else where it was a little easier to get to. I just never anticipated a problem with it. So it could either be the transfer switch or there is one junction box in the system uh, before it gets to there. Um, but I don't think I... I don't think there's a junk. I'll have to look at that. There is one junction box. So there's two places where it could possibly be where the problem with the power is. So I got to research it, but I don't think it's actually the inverter itself. Uh, thank goodness. Uh, I think it's an electrical issue that happened. And my guess would be the transfer switch, but that's just, uh, that's the only moving part in the system. So possibly that's what failed. When I mounted this Mr. Cool in here, uh, the transfer switch is back behind there. And I actually hear it humming. I don't recall it humming um, so that could be a problem
So I just have to finish loosening up these bolts here um, or have it mounted on these rubber pads and then uh, I'll be able to move this out of the way. So it's not too hard to get to and there's plenty of room. It'll just pivot out. I'll just pivot it out from that in there and I can get right into where the transfer switch is.